everyone and welcome back to day 15 of Vlogmas. I'm gonna have to crouch because I can't seem to get the spot for the uh, camera correct. So today we're gonna be making chocolate crinkle cookies. Uh, really excited to do this. I've done something similar I believe before and this recipe is more or less from Delish. So realizing, whoops. I need to make sure I got everything out. So, first things, you're gonna need a cup and a three quarters of flour, seven, or three quarters of a cup of cocoa powder, one teaspoon of kosher salt, a teaspoon of baking soda. Where is it? This is the soda. You're going to need some baking powder also, as well as butter, which I have in the fridge right now, that is going to have to be melted, uh, sugar. I'm going to be doing a combination of a stevia as well as normal sugar, just to make sure I have enough. And brown sugar, which again, I'm going to be doing a combination of the two. And for crinkle cookies, you also need eggs and powdered sugar to roll them up. So this will be exciting and this should be a much better baking incident than trying to make that gingerbread. I'm gonna get flashbacks and nightmares of that for quite some time, I feel. But let me get all the ingredients measured out and we will start. So the first thing to do is we're going to be combining the flour, cocoa powder, uh, salt, baking soda, and baking powder. So with the um, flour, again, like I usually like to do, I'm going to sift. It is a cup and a quarter. So for the most part, I'm just going to be using the half cup because it's easier to remember. Yeah, with this recipe, I wanted to make sure that there, there was also instructions. Um, I learned my lesson after the uh, gingerbread. And also, I have at least gotten more of my ingredients ready to go. Like the butter is melted instead of having unmelted. Uh, co what was that? Coconut oil? Yep a cup and three quarters. Now it's going to be a quarter cup of cocoa powder. Yeah, I had to run out to the grocery store to get more because I used to use a lot of cocoa powder when um, making chia pudding, which was like one of the big things I made for about a semester. Ooh, there's gonna be a little cocoa powder in my flour. I'm going to go just going to try to smash out these clumps. Now it is a three quarters of a teaspoon of baking powder. A full teaspoon of salt and one teaspoon of baking soda. Okay. Actually, I'm gonna mix these all around just so a little bit incorporated. So I have already cracked the eggs and melted the butter. Yeah, first time I melted it, I accidentally overflowed it, so whoops. And again, I'm just going to use the fork because I feel like I get more control when whisking <laughs> that way. I need to get a better whisk, honestly, also. Okay. Whisking in the butter and eggs. And then we're going to add three quarters of a cup of sugar. So... In this case, I'm going to do one cup 
or half a cup of the normal sugar and then a quarter cup of the stevia. Half cup of sugar and a quarter cup of the stevia. So I periodically like to work with the stevia just because it is a little bit lower calorie. No, really, a lot of the calorie comes from like the flour. Uh, but and the thing is, as they recommend, actually, if you're baking with anything that's like a stevia, use about like at least half normal sugar and then half the stevia, so you can get the same sort of caramelization you were typically going for. Okay, so next we're gonna do the brown sugar. So. I'm going to do a quarter cup of the Truvia brown sugar. I'll do a quarter cup of the normal brown sugar. So this will be an interesting combination because not only is it the two different uh, types of sweetener, but also it's a light and a brown, a light and a dark version of the brown sugars that are going to be combined. And my coffee now has powder on it. Whoops. Next thing, we're going to be adding the dry in bits. And I'm going to, whoops, some of it is going to be sifted. Some of it's not. Kind of getting things mixed together a teensy bit better. So I do really enjoy baking. I just, it's always can get so messy and just a lot of effort. And I have quite a small kitchen, so with very little counter space. Like my microwave, for example, takes up a good chunk of my counter space because uh, <laughs> this place did not come with a microwave. So that's always fun. The other thing with baking is it usually I end up with so many leftovers for everything and it's just can be a hassle. Yeah, these I'm probably going to more likely give to my boss. Also maybe because I'm going to probably visit a friend of mine because I need to drop something off for her so give some to her too. Because this is being recorded on the 14th and I fly out on the 16th. So makes no sense for me to keep these. Although I have actually traveled with uh, cookies in my uh, carry-on. That was, they were like, <sighs> I was uh, visiting a friend of mine and we decided to bake Christmas cookies because it was uh, early December and we were trying to figure out stuff to do on a Saturday in Minnesota. <laughs> and the winter so we were like okay we'll make christmas cookies because both of us like baking he's even much more of a chef than i ever was for baking okay but in i do more i'm more of a mom and like in the kitchen working on the potluck he was i think leaning more confectionery but we made uh cookies that were pretty good both uh, a peppermint cookie and a uh, just typical shortbread uh, to have or sugar cookies not shortbread uh, sugar cookies in this case uh, he like we made them his mother did not want all of them in the house so I brought them back with me I gave some to like friends that I had visited because I'd also ended up making uh, bourbon balls although like the chocolate can't use butter to like make a whoops a chocolate spread so that did not help okay yeah this seems about the right consistency although i will say i want to add one thing i'll be right back so the thing i want to add actually thinking about it is some peppermint extract i'm thinking a max like half a teaspoon uh, because I don't want it to be too overpowering and I don't want to add too many liquids into this. 
I do enjoy the smell of peppermint, although this kind of smells more like the dentist's office. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I realized since I've been recording myself, I do a lot, which I apologize for. Okay. Oh, oh, oh it smells good. It smells nice and minty. So I'm going to wrap this and put this in the fridge for two hours. So I shall see you guys afterwards. So we're back. It's been about three plus hours. You can see it's quite solid. Um, and it smells like brownies with a little bit of peppermint, which is great. And I've got the powdered sugar for dusting. And I have already lined the cookie sheets and preheated the oven. So we'll get started on making these cookies. It says to do two tablespoons, uh, but I'm just gonna eyeball. I'm going to feel with my heart. Also smells really good, like real good. better. Now, I forgot how many the recipe initially said it would make. I'm always kind of notorious for uh, overextending, <laughs> or really not overextending, like making fewer. I usually make, don't have nearly as many batches. That one's a tiny little one. It was recommended in the recipe that if you are starting to have problems with it clumping or getting not being as easy to uh, work with, wetting the hands, ends up putting on a wet coating so we almost will be able to kind of compare because one was fine, the other one was not, the other like tray was not, so we'll see. that's it I got a total of 19 cookies which I don't think is that bad so this is what the cookies look like right before we put them in the oven for uh, about 14 minutes so they definitely crackled but the powdered sugar didn't really stay so that's sad okay so I've made the cookies I sometimes wonder maybe if I should have either added more powdered sugar or have powdered them afterwards, but I'm excited. This is from the second tray, but let's have a taste. It's got a good peppermint flavor all the way through. It's nice and fluffy, almost like a muffin top. A uh, little dry. Uh, I don't know if that's because like it's kind of got a interesting crust with having the powdered sugar having been on it. But it's not bad. It's something that, like, having with some milk would maybe work. I'm not usually a person that does a lot of, like, milk and cookies, but I'm going to see. So I've just got some 1% milk in this mug. Let's see. Not bad. Yeah. Generally, the texture leans more almost to, like, a cake, but it's pretty good. I give this baking adventure probably 8 out of 10 when, for example, if you took the gingerbread, that would have been like a 4 out of 10. Don't know if I want to give it to my boss or not because like he, his family is really into baking. So I probably will just hand it out to friends then. I'm just going to drink the rest of this milk and finish up editing. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Uh, check out my Instagram. It's Obi like Kenobi. And I will see you guys next time on Vlogmas. Bye!